Hello, and welcome to The Inner Journey. <laughs> I'm Rob Morales, RCO Network, here uh, live every Wednesday, uh, talking about health and healing and the inner spirit and the things that um, we as people come across in our emotions and daily life. Uh, but please welcome my esteemed and beautiful co-host, Miss Mary Van Elstein. Yeah, she's here. <laughs> shaved my head. Yeah, and she shaved her head. <laughs> today and today only. For, for you and you only. <laughs> so every Wednesday we come at you uh, here at RCO Network um, talking about emotions and feelings and trying to get a hold uh, and understand what it is to be human, uh, what it is to have these thoughts and inhibitions and actions that we take and getting a hold of that and actually feeling like we have a grasp on our lives and our progressions forward, if that makes sense. Hello, Mary. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? <laughs> so today we're going to start off the show with uh, Mary reading. She has a very <laughs> calming voice. And I told her, you know what? Last week when you when you read the purchase contract, I was very soothed. And I think <laughs> I think if people knew that. And I, I really think you should read books, by the way. If people knew how comfortable your voice was. They would hire you just to read like bedtime stories. Just to read bedtime. My kids must be lucky then. So I selected a song. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to make me read lyrics. Yeah, I selected a song. Um, and you may recognize it, but uh, if you could read it, Miss Mary, it's oh, all, it, it is all you. Okay. <laughs> Wake up, Maggie. I think I've got something to say to you. It's late September, and I really should be back at school. I know I keep you amused, but I'm... But I feel I'm being used. Oh, Maggie, I couldn't have tried anymore. Oh, my gosh. Hello. Sign me up. Okay, I'm, I'm buying whatever. Whatever you're selling, I'll buy. <laughs> All right, you can get out of <laughs> Poor, <this>. Maggie. <laughs> Poor Maggie. Poor um, Maggie. So if you're, if you're watching us live here on Facebook, uh, give us a little love because we love the love. Just throw that little love. heart up there. You know, Mary appreciates all the streams of hearts that she gets every week. <laughs> if you have any comments and questions regarding, you know, any of the topics we're talking about, go ahead and drop those in the comment section. We'll read them as we go along. And if you're on YouTube, we love it when you like us, and then we love you even more if you subscribe to our channel. So uh, we'll see you there too every week here on Inner Journey. <laughs> so uh, the, the show topic today is called The Devil Inside. And every time I see it, I, I, like when we were talking about the show, I, or at least when I texted you this morning, it was like, that, you know, that was in my, son, in my head. But really what it identifies is living two lives. I know, and in every capacity and everything that I face in life, I always feel like I've been living two lives. It's almost like, uh, you know, everybody here on Facebook, you uh, portray what you want people to see. You know, like uh, I knew a girl out of high school where every every weekend there was family time, great husband. I love my husband. This, this, this is that. And then you find out a couple of weeks later that they're getting a divorce or, and then there was turmoil and that there was a break in that communication or at least the portrayal. And all of a sudden now she's single and now she's kind of doing a few things that <laughs> single people do. <laughs> On Facebook? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know. It went from like these very plain clothes, you know, very kind of like blah, like uh, weekend shorts, maybe no bra underneath, like meat, to like uh, like like leather outfits and everything. It's wow. like crazy. Like almost overnight within a few weeks. It happens. Yeah. yeah. So have you have you had experiences like that? Have you Have you ever – does that resonate with you, Mary, as far as like having two different – mindsets or two th different thoughts like that? Yeah, um, it, it does. And I can think back to probably it occurred a lot more in my younger years, I yep. feel, before my journey of mindfulness, where I felt that I had to portray a certain image, a certain personality yep. um, in order to be a quote unquote successful person in the, in the world. And so I definitely felt like I was a different person in many different areas, a different person with friends where I wanted to be accepted, a different person at work where I wanted to appear, you know, all put together and professional oh. and like my life was perfect. And probably even back in the day of so new, you know, social media becoming new, yeah. a little bit of that um, getting put out there, although I don't tend to um, be very different from what goes on social media nowadays. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, I think it's been a really long journey, especially for me too, to be kind of an authentic person. Mm -hmm. An authentic meaning, you know, not necessarily, um, I, I guess, uh, understanding that there is cultural norms that we have to adhere to. You know, I just can't walk out of the house naked, you know, even though I take a shower naked. You could. I mean, <laughs> I mean you could, but you would probably get arrested too. Yeah. <laughs> so there, there's some social norms that we kind of have to adhere to. But then there is the uninhibited me that just wants to like take it all off and just be, be free and just kind of balls out literally like on the couch and not worry about like people what they think. 
Yeah. You know, and, um, you know, because again, under certain social contexts, you can't always be your true self. You know, I actually, while we we're just sitting here talking about yeah. this, I got reminded of a story of when it really hit me that I was not being authentic. Got my hair. I look bald without my hair. You down. look, you look so, fabulous uh, so, with your like ponytail. I have, like, anyway, so, um, <laughs> It just caught me off guard. Sorry. Um, so I was walking through a parking lot at one time and yep. dressed up in my, you know, work clothes. And I all remember I always had a smile on my face. I was one of those people who were was always happy. Yep. Right. And uh, at that time in my life, I was actually very depressed and miserable. And uh, it didn't seem like anybody knew it around me. And I was walking through a parking lot and I said hi to a lady walking mm. by. And she stopped me and she looked at me and she pulls me aside and she said, you know, you look so happy and put together on the outside, but you're really dying inside. And I was like, how did this, uh, like, I'm like, I got to get better at this, you know, outer appearance. It turns out she was a psychic. So apparently she picked up on my energy yeah. because, you know, psychics, I think they're just have trained skills on picking up people's energy and, you know, not that, that they can predict everything, but it's just reading off of someone. Right. Yeah. So she was able to see the true me on the inside, which was depressed and dying and holding up this, this front for the world that, that everything's okay and I'm happy and bubbly and cheery. So yeah, that just came to mind. And that probably was the beginning of my awareness around the whole thing. Yeah. And I think, I, I think uh, awareness for me came from a lot of pain. You know, I, I was, uh, when I was right after my divorce, I was really trying to find myself and it was through other people, you know, when you can't really figure out your own emotions and kind of where these feelings and thoughts come on, you kind of unload that on somebody else inadvertently and unconsciously. I don't, I don't, I don't think you intend to really hurt anybody that come across your path. It's just, they're just kind of, you know, they're available sometimes, you know, it's like a, almost like a puppy that's just there and wants to be part of your life. And then you're like, you know, you smack him around a little bit, he still comes around, you know, and it's, you know, so it was a lot of pain in my life uh, when I was like, especially dating, you know, and I, and I met, a, I met a couple people and there was one that I was dating who told me she was getting a divorce but that wasn't really the case, you know, and she was hiding the fact that she was still married. The guy still lived there, but yet we were going on dates and, you know, doing other things and almost living two lives. There was that uh, uh, uninhibited her where she just wanted to be to feel like a, a, a woman, I guess, you know, in a way to feel desired, you know, where where she lost that in her in her husband and in the world that she created you know, with this other person. She kind of lost that sense of being desired. And I think after a relationship, after time, um, that kind of wears down, you know, a little bit. It's, it's because, you know, you see the person, you see their true selves, you see like, you know, sometimes they smell and it's like, oh, it's not very attractive. <laughs> and sometimes they say the wrong thing and they're like, oh, that was stupid. And I, and I am subject to saying a lot of stupid stuff all the time. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's really like, like I said, it's, we're living constantly two lives, the things that we want in life and the, the things that we, we need in life sometimes. Does that make sense? Um, there is the, the emotional selfish ego that only thinks about yourself, that wants, um, you know, things for you, things to go your way, things to be happy. And then there's the logical, mindful consciousness, that side of yourself that's very conscientious of other people, other people's feelings, that's giving. And those two are always a conflict, you know, it seems like. Especially like, again, you're if you're in a, a really, uh, you know, loving relationship, but yet you don't feel desired and you tend to want to seek that out elsewhere. And how do I satisfy that? You know, I guess that's the big question of the day. It's like, how do I satisfy these things that I can't get either in a particular situation or from a particular person? Well, I really feel like it boils down to um, self-acceptance in a lot of ways, yeah. if you look at it, because <clears throat> when you are accepting of yourself and your wants and your desires, then you are more willing to share those with other people. Right. And yeah. so and it's about taking a look at, you know, your desires and how they were constructed, I believe, as well. You know, are they um, desires that were constructed out of some sort of trauma or neglect or you know what I mean? And so yeah. but learning to also accept what you want and show up as that more and more in your life versus what you feel like everyone else needs to see. Because the truth is, we all think that we need to be this in this situation, this and this, but it's all made up in our head. If you really think about it, yeah. I didn't have to show up looking that way and being professional and put together. I learned that the more vulnerable I became and the more truthful I became about what was really going on in my life, the more people actually respected me, you know, and the more friends I had because like people want to know people and we all, all walk around with these 
whatever you want to call them looking good suits, I guess, or whatever it is. And, and that yeah. doesn't breed closeness. And same thing with the relationship. It's like, or I f- truly believe a relationship can be an evolution into something even more beautiful. And you can have the highest levels of desire. And as long as there is that communication and honesty and openness about your true inner thoughts and feelings, right? Yeah, and in I a think, responsible way. And I, and I think in my previous marriage, I held a lot of that back, a lot of my own feelings back because I was mindful of somebody else's feelings. Mm-hmm. I felt like if I unloaded and, and said these certain things to this person, they would feel hurt by it. So like in my previous marriage, when I would go look at other women, she, she like, I remember one situation in the car uh, where my ex-wife was sitting there and I, and I just glanced at some girl walking. It wasn't even um, like, uh, like sexually or anything. I just saw her and I just kind of, something captivated me about her. It wasn't, she wasn't really that attractive, but she was a female. And uh, for about two seconds, like, like almost like she was crossing the street. And as I turned back, she was just so mad. And I, she, uh, she hit me on the arm quite a number of times, you know, it's kind of, I used to feel embarrassed to admit stuff like that, but you know, it is what it is. And I felt so disheveled. I'm like, Oh, I'm, I'm so, I wasn't even, I wasn't even looking, you know, I wasn't even looking at her that way, but yet she felt that and projected all that fear and anger that I was separating myself. And I was at that point in that relationship where I was kind of separating emotionally. So that in it, in and of itself was kind of uh, quantifying or making it a little bit more tangible that yes, I am separating from this relationship. And that was her way to kind of garnish and gain that back, that control back. So I recognize that now. And back then it was like, okay, I better hide these feelings. I better shove them under the rug and pretend I don't look at other women at all, especially in front of her, because I don't want to hurt her feelings. And I think we do that a lot in relationships. I think we don't, we only don't, we not only, <laughs> I know I'm doing the same thing. <laughs> not only, we're tongue tied today. Not yeah. only do we do that in relationships, we do that in every area of our lives, yeah. you know, because, and that's a slippery, slippery slope, pretending to be oh. something that you're not in order to like be trying to be overly conscientious. I like to call it because I was also that, and that is a complete take. I believe from other people, you know, because you're not showing up as your authentic self. And you're also somehow psychologically that creates new problems, right? Not yep. just the now you're not, you know, now you're suppressing these things or you're, you know what I mean? Like trying to hide parts of yourself and suppressing and what you resist persists. So it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. It may have you acting in ways that you wouldn't have acted before if you were just honest about the fact that you thought someone was attractive. You know what I mean? And that's okay. You know, yeah. and we have these thoughts all the time. I think, you know, it comes across and, and when I was talking um, uh, to a person, I, I think it was Violet. I, I, I was telling you the story and I'm pretty sure it was Violet I was talking about. If if she was like, um, you know, approached by The Rock or if you were approached by The Rock, <laughs> Mary, and and you're in, a, you're in a relationship with me and we're we're pretty solid. But The Rock comes by. He's like, hey, Mary, uh, you know, you're pretty you're pretty hot. And I know I'm married, but, um, you know, if we just have this one sexual thing, you know, we won't tell anybody. We won't say anything. Just keep it on the wraps. It'll just be this one thing. They'll be gone. I mean, I, I can't blame you for thinking that like, oh, man, this is an opportunity. <laughs> I can't like <laughs> if, do it. <laughs> if we're in a relationship, it's like, oh, my God, well, tell me about it. <laughs> you know, because uh, you know, despite, you know, that we have a solid relationship, despite that we're like so close that that thought in your brain would click off and be like, well, maybe I can get away with this. And that's the emotional ego. That's the one that's saying, you know what? indulge, Mm. try it out. Why not? But then the logical side, he says, well, there's a bigger picture here. You know, you're in a relationship. If, if you go do this thing, it's going to weigh in on you emotionally. And over time it might disrupt your long-term relationship with the person you've totally fallen in love with. Mm -hmm. And, and I think it's okay. And it shouldn't be uh, dismissed, but it should be recognized that we do have these inhibitions and we do have these thoughts and it's okay to have those thoughts. Mm -hmm. It's really the actions that we take that are determine you yeah. know, the the sense of like uh, respect or, you know, that, that sense of uh, uh, acceptance. Yeah, I do agree with um, oh The gosh. Rock. <laughs> I'm if, all, if now rock. I can't think straight. I lost my train of thought. She was thinking about The Rock. <laughs> no, I, that was a good example. I, mean, I do agree I would, with the, the honesty, oh, right? Yeah, the yeah, the being that. honest with ourselves yeah. and like not super, like this is where we become our own worst enemy because that could happen and I could have that ooh that'd be awesome you know that's and then that other side of me that goes look what it would do to your relationship and then that side gets a little bit too loud yeah. and starts 
beating up on the side of me that has that impulsive desire yep. and making it wrong, which is like what I said before, just magnifies the problem or makes it bigger and bigger. I'm just, I'm still drooling over the rocks. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. But I, <laughs> I think I'm also on vacation already. <laughs> yeah, she's going on vacation. She's heading out of town, and I'm a little jelly that she's going on vacation. I haven't had one in a long time. You need one. So it's good. <laughs> I but, need one because I can't speak anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, th I think it's it's okay to accept somebody. And, and I think that's really the evolution of you emotionally. Because before I would be, um, like if she, if we had that same story, if it was Violet and we were having that same conversation, and uh, she's like, yeah, look at this guy, he's really hot. Before I would get, my ego would be like, oh my God, I need to work out more. I need to look that. I need to have blue eyes. I need to have more hair. You know, then it would start feeding in. I'm like, well, why is she attracted to me? Why is this going? And then all of a sudden it turns into blame. Like, you should have done this. You should have done that. Mm -hmm. In some other capacity because I don't recognize that I, my own insecurities. Yeah, insecurity, yeah. Yeah, and it's projecting out, mm -hmm. you know. And that's that's the conversation that needs to happen. And that's really the, the sense of evolution in your emotional state. Yeah. We're not taught to be emotionally involved whatsoever. It's it's at like the last four years. I'm, I'm, I'm 42. It's really the last four to five years that I've really – emotionally evolved from when I was like 15 years old. Well, and we were also, if you look at it, r raised by the silent era, Yeah, you know? We don't talk about I mean, stuff. we don't talk <laughs> about things like that. And yeah. so now that it's becoming a little bit more, like now that our generation is starting to speak up and have conversations yeah. like this, I think it's becoming much more um, okay to start ha to have these emotions and feelings, but it's definitely a beautiful thing to see more and more people living authentically. I love it. Yeah. And uh, right now we're on the inner journey. So if you're watching us live here on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, I'm going to leave your comments and questions um, regarding to anything we're talking about. Today's show, The Devil Inside, is talking about that conflict between ourselves and allowing ourselves to be uh, okay with our thoughts and feelings, but also kind of uh, not necessarily question, but definitely uh, reflect upon the actions we take. So hang in there. Uh, we got about another 10, 15 minutes or so. So, Or if you want to hire me to do a reading. Uh, uh, if, uh, if you want to you hire Mary to do a reading. I will have another reading here in just a second. At the beginning of every show. <laughs> I do like that, though, the, the whole thing. I can calm you down with a guided meditation. How about that? What not, is it? Not right now. Oh. <laughs> we, I guess we're running out of time. <laughs> But I, I think a lot of times, uh, going back to avoiding those thoughts and feelings, I, th I think it's okay. And, and when you're with a person, it should be, and, and really it should be that you feel comfortable enough to have those thoughts and share those feelings and be, and be okay with it. It wasn't until like the end of my divorce when I was just like, it was one night, you know, I had, she had told me, it was the same day she told me that she'd been with somebody else. And that like, that was devastating, man. So she was with somebody else, and I went on a drinking binge. I remember drinking about a half bottle of vodka and then driving back to my, my home home. I was lit, staying with a friend at the time. So I drove back home, which I should never have done. And I even I, even today, I'm like, I'm so glad I made it there safe. Um, I remember stumbling in the house, falling over, hitting my head against the wall. Like, like there's a hole in the wall. <laughs> wow. And I just waited there, and I just sat there literally for about uh, six or seven hours while she was out doing whatever. It was like 3 a.m. by the time she got home. So it must have been a Friday or Saturday, something like that. And uh, it gave me a lot of time to think about where I was at. And and uh, I was very in a depressed state. But when she got there, I finally just let it all go. Everything that I'd been holding back, I didn't do it in a, in a very aggressive way. I didn't do it in a blaming or shaming way. It was just more of a matter of fact way. And I think when you are truthful, it doesn't hurt. It, 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 it's, it hurts inside the other person because I think they realize that they hurt you or that you're hurting. But in the fact, it was very relieving to let it just all go, you know, and it was just, again, matter of fact, there was an emotion behind it. It wasn't any kind of blaming, pointing, finger pointing. It was just like, hey, this is how I've been feeling for so long. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until this drunk uh, <laughs> moment in the middle of our divorce uh, at this 3 a.m. that I was able to really reflect and just let it go because I had nothing to lose at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, everything I was holding on to, the family, the marriage, the house, all gone. Mm -hmm. just, at, at that point, it was the realization it was just all gone. But being truthful in the moment and just allowing myself to be truthful and, and not, again, point fingers, was very uplifting, very relieving, and just eliminated a lot of that depression. It was just crazy. It was a crazy moment, and, and I still think about that today. And I, and, I, and I really emphasize when people are out there to have those moments. And, and, and again, it's not about a shame or blame. It's like, hey, this is how I felt. 
and, and never lead off with like, you made me feel this way. No. Re- I responsible. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I made me, or I allowed these feelings to in- infiltrate my infrastructure. I allow these feelings to resonate with me. It's, there's no blaming or shaming anybody. It's all the scripts and everything you've learned that, that you really need to f- reflect upon and change. Yeah. And if and a tip on that is like, keep it about what I'm experiencing, not about yeah. the other person. So, you know, I, and don't make it about like, be really careful with your words. And when you start to say, because when you did this, I felt this. No, there's no need to say when anybody did anything. I felt this way. I have been feeling this way. Yeah. Um, I tend to go this way, you know, and um, and that's a great way to be irresponsible. And, and to kind of tie into what you were saying um, just before that, I think that just with anything, right, in order to be able to have those kind converse- of conversations yeah. as a couple or even as friends or family, you have to really start with the inward journey, yeah. <laughs> right? You have to be able to have those conversations with yourself and be able to look at, you know, certain things that trigger you and oh. where those stemmed from and are they even really valid and do they do, do they add value to your life does it does it benefit me to ha- hold on to this thought or feeling or insecurity you know and i would say that's the most important thing is going on that inward journey to really get clear with yourself number one before we can start but but still being able to practice with other people being authentic with how are you doing oh i'm not doing that great today Thank Being honest those. and truthful. Yeah, honest, truthful, like those little things before you get into the heavier stuff, you know, yeah. and being able to have those very open conversations in a relationship, if, especially if this yeah. you've been together for a while and you haven't gotten there. It, it's, a, it's a process, right? Yeah, and I think another takeaway is uh, the patterns. Really observe your patterns. And, and if you really take a back step, and, and our failure is people, and it's really not our fault. Um, it's, it's really society and the culture we've developed. We've developed this like pill-popping culture pill popping and everything like we need to buy something new we need to it's an avoidance yeah reality absolutely like like you're drowning yourself in tv you're drowning yourself in in other people's thoughts all the time that we don't take the moments to really reflect upon our our thoughts and feelings but you'll notice if you ever take the time and think about a situation whether it's an argument whether it's something really good and reflect upon that you'll see that there's a series of patterns in your life Mm -hmm. and they're usually usually developed around childhood but there's a series of patterns you know, when I uh, I realized in my marriage or my ex, my last uh, relationship, that that pattern of uh, back and forth, the emotions really emulated my parents, you know, and their discussions and their arguments and the things that they taught me, essentially, that what that's what love was. And so I continue to engage in that in every relationship. And I noticed that same or similar pattern where I was either my dad in a relationship or my mom in a relationship. Mm-hmm. I was either the really defensive, funny emotional we, one. Funny how we get both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it sways and it sways back and forth depending yeah. on who the other person is. So I you either become the parent or my uh, in my case, it was my dad who was very authoritative, very argumentative, very emotionally cut off or the one that was very dismissive, my mom. Uh, very dismissive, very kind of like uh, closed off and not wanting to open up and then kind of using other people to open up too, but still staying in a relationship despite the, the issues, despite the arguments and stuff. Yeah, you basically were able to observe yourself and the, the learned behaviors that you took on from each of your parents. That's a great awareness. So the thing that you brought up was was doing the opposite. So I noticed like um, like being truthful, like going back to my um, that discussion with my ex-wife, that, that moment when I'm just totally drunk and totally reflective at 3 a.m., I just did the opposite, mm-hmm. complete opposite, was ultimately truthful because I had nothing left to lose. Mm-hmm. And again, it was so relieving mm-hmm. and, and all the pain just kind of seemed to alleviate momentarily, if not for a couple hours after that. Yeah, you weren't holding on to all those those stories. Like yeah. It's like layers and layers of you. We're both hitting stuff over here. I know. <laughs> We're, We're getting into it. <laughs> <laughs> or hand talkers. Um, yeah, so it's like you took off a suit after suit after suit of all these things that you had been carrying around for all those years. Yeah. So to get to the point of being able to do that without the alcohol. What is yeah, it? don't do it without alcohol. <laughs> do not get in a car after a half bottle of vodka. I say don't to touch out. your phone. Don't, don't call Oh, that's anyone. another thing. Do don't not text. <laughs> don't jump on social media. <laughs> There's a, there should be a breathalyzer on your phone is what I, I do. Yeah, yeah, don't do what I did. I, uh, this is not relationship advice. <laughs> <laughs> but, but again, it was just, um, to your point, doing the opposite. Mm-hmm. 
um, really helped things a little bit, helped me see things that I could actually have a conversation. And that led me to counseling and that led me to realize I have issues with women, which is, you know, a whole other thing. It's a whole other topic. <laughs> you know, it helped me realize a lot of things. And I've, I've really come to peace with that. And I think the first step was um, honestly just being honest, mm -hmm. just vulnerable and honest. And there's no shame and blame in being honest as long as you're truthful about it. As long as you're not m manipulating or trying to, again, blame somebody else for your problems. As long as you realize that, I think you can be completely honest with somebody. The, the trick is, are they willing to accept that? Well, and that's <laughs> are they going to the, allow you to, yeah, to say anything? Yeah, and that is also the thing is that we do, we do not have control over anyone else, right? Yeah. And it's however they react is not always about us. In fact, it's never about us. It's about what's going on in them. Say they're insecure. If you if you say something to one person who's very secure and solid, and you say the same exact thing to someone who's insecure, you're going to have two very different reactions. Yeah. So being able to be okay with with yourself, right? Is that's kind of what I was talking about earlier. Yeah. Being okay and accepting it yourself before being willing to share it with others, and and like really going on that journey of self love and self acceptance. Yeah. Because if you accept yourself and you say something that maybe doesn't resonate or makes someone else uncomfortable or insecure, you're yeah. not going to take ownership of that because you're very secure and solid in yourself, right? So yeah, and I think it's just easy. It's just easy to blame people. It's so easy. Yeah, no, you <laughs> We're don't born as victims. Mm -hmm. Look at little kids. <laughs> it's their fault. I mean, I've, I watch my kids all the time. Oh boy. <laughs> you know, they hit each other or they do something. And, well, it's Cody made me do it. You know, and it's like it's so interesting to observe. I learn so much from them. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have kids, uh, <laughs> Mary's learning lesson your, your is have kids. Ahead, no. <laughs> yeah. But I think also too uh, to that point, your children are a reflection of how where you're at in your mental state too. Oh yeah, absolutely. You yeah. know, if they're constantly fighting and battling between each other, then that battle probably ensues within you. Because uh, I, I do notice that a lot of parents, um, uh, they contribute to those some of those behaviors, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, they continue even in adulthood, mm -hmm. you know, and in my family for sure. Well, <laughs> and the parents absolutely do, and, and including if the parents are separated, right, and they oh. have two different households, including their teachers, including their peers at school, including what they see on YouTube, you know, which because now it's not uh, – PBS, it's YouTube, right? <laughs> so, it's everything. Now. You can learn <laughs> um, anything about everything. Yeah, so it's it is interesting to watch their energy shift. Though I can always tell kind of where I'm at. Like I told you, the example of finding myself in an mm -hmm. old familiar pattern of putting too much on my place and being in this place of overwhelm, and then noticing, you know, looking back, they have been fighting a little bit more, you know. And so they're, it's we're all made of energy. We all feel each other, whether we believe in it or not. It's it's scientifically yeah. proven now. You know, if you walk into a room, you can usually kind of feel someone if you stop and pay attention to it so they are absolutely a reflection of what's going on inside of me <laughs> yeah yeah and, and if there's turmoil in your house and your children are having turmoil then again they're just uh, they're emulating or if not exhausting the things that you're in in, in the middle of whatever yeah, whatever's going on in your mirroring household. back to me what's going on yeah yeah because the whole world is a is a reflection of our inner self our inner <laughs> world right everything we observe so so what have we learned today miss mary we're uh, coming to the end of the show so we've learned a lot <laughs> <laughs> knew about my uh, drunken habits which i don't you know well i mean i think i think that that just boils down to every single topic we talk about yeah. it's all about the inner journey it's all about getting to really know yourself getting to really be honest with how you're feeling and the thoughts that you're having getting into mindfulness so you're even aware of the thoughts and the feelings that you're having and being able to separate the you who's this you know observer yeah. and the ego right which is a deeper topic which we'll get into later but um, yeah, mindfulness, inward journey. It's like that is the key, I think, is something that ev every time we talk, and it kind of points back to that, I just get more confirmation of the importance of that being the first step. So as we as we come to the end of the show today, if you're uh, watching us, again, leave any comments or questions. You know, uh, I, I definitely appreciate you, Mary, for being here and, and continuing this journey along with me. Yeah. You know, um, so every week uh, we're going to be coming at you here on Wednesdays. Um, maybe not next week. Somebody's on vacation. I'm going to be gone. Somebody's on vacation. Yeah. So if you want to step in for Mary, which is, is very hard, I will say <laughs> you have to, you, you know, you have to do the reading. You too. have to do an application. Applications will be online. <laughs> There'll be several interviews, probably about seven or eight, just to even replace Mary for one show. You're so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I want to thank everybody here. Thank you, Mary, for, for joining thank me you. on this interview. It's always a pleasure. 
Thank you for joining us. Thank you for coming. To the end of journey. <laughs> <laughs> I love the voice, man. We'll catch you guys um, maybe next week. Maybe we'll do a replay. I don't know. Later. <laughs>